This is a sermon from St. Paul's Church, Brookfield, Connecticut, transforming lives through Jesus. For more information, go to www.stpaulsbrookfield.com. The love of God is thick in our midst. As we process with that wonderful hymn, God is love. Did you sense what I did, that through the Holy Spirit, the love of God is filling us more and more? And whatever you come in with today, if you're sorrowful or brokenhearted or grieving, if your faith feels weak, if you're questioning things, know that the love of God is palpable, it's here, it's present for you. God loves you and has sent you the Holy Spirit. And that will be part of our message this morning. The verse we preach on this morning is this. Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Let us pray. Lord, show us what it means to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. Jesus, speak to us through your word. Show us the way forward through your love. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that fills us with that love now and always in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. Now, I know you heard that and thought, of course. No problem, right? In the United Kingdom, there's an exam known as the GCSE, the General Certificate of Secondary Education. An article in the Telegraph of London featured the news that students' answers to questions would now be published online to allow the public to judge whether standards are declining. From the category of Bible knowledge, which I know you'll be especially interested in, here are a few entries. Moses led the Hebrew slaves to the Red Sea, where they made unleavened bread, which is bread made without any ingredients at all. <laughs> Moses went up on Mount Sinai to get the Ten Commandments. He died before he ever reached Canada. <laughs> Another wrote this. In the first book of the Bible, Genesis, <laughs> Adam and Eve were created from an apple tree. One of their children came and asked, am I my brother's son? <laughs> and another offered this. King Solomon had 300 wives and 700 porcupines. <laughs> he meant concubines. <laughs> and finally this, my personal favorite, Jesus and his family flew to Egypt with the help of Pontius the Pilate. <laughs> we all make errors. Some are humorous and harmless. Others are quite serious. As the Bible reminds us, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So how is it that Jesus calls us to be perfect <coughs> as God is perfect? Last week we looked at St. Augustine's quote who said, essentially, I take the Bible too seriously to take it all literally, which is to say that some passages are meant to be taken metaphorically, figuratively. For instance, last week we had the scripture, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. And if we literally did that, You'd have a blind preacher this morning. We're on the same teaching flow in Matthew this morning as we hear Jesus' words. And they're provocative, and they're meant to push the hearer to raise the bar so high that when one hears it, they think, I don't know how I could possibly ever do it, and that's the whole point. In our own strength, we cannot do it. Jesus employs what is essentially Jewish hyperbole in that context which was to push the ears so far that all they could do would be to scratch their heads and essentially either admit their powerlessness or keep trying to deny that there's anything wrong with them, that they can do it with enough willpower. We have to look at the larger context of our Lord's ministry to understand his words from this chapter of Matthew. What is Jesus' point in today's lesson? We can't walk the walk of faith alone in our own strength. We need God's love working through us. That's the only way we can fulfill the call of Jesus in our lives. 
Last week, if you were here among the small crowd or perhaps watched online, you saw that we looked to the columns of the day to understand how the day's readings were to be measured. And the operative word last week was grace. This week it's love. Let's hear those words again from our college. Oh Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love. And that, by the way, is a direct quote from Romans 5.5. 5 which says, God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. It's a reminder that our liturgy from the Book of Common Prayer is infused with the Word of God. Let's hear Romans 5, 5 once again. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. Meditate on that for a moment. God's love has been poured into your heart and is continually being poured into your heart through the Holy Spirit as we look to Jesus. To understand the call of Jesus to turn the other cheek, to go the extra mile, to give to everyone who begs, to love our enemies, we actually have to start with the end of that passage to understand it. Be perfect, therefore, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. The word perfect, as Jesus uses it, is defined as, quote, the bringing of a thing to that completeness of condition designed for it. Once again, the bringing of a thing to that completeness of condition designed for it. This means we are incomplete or imperfect all on our own. Apart from Christ, our lives are like a puzzle missing the centerpiece. So to be perfect is not to be free from error, but to be complete in Christ. It is when we are complete inside that we then find ourselves able to live faith outside, going beyond what we think we can do in our own strength, like loving our enemies. God's love flows into the Holy Spirit to then go out. We can't give away what we do not first have. We look to Jesus for everything as Christians. He is the giver of all good gifts. He is the one working through us that allows us to do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Like loving those who hate us. Or giving to those who ask. Or going that extra mile for someone in need. In the first book of the Bible, Genesis, not Genesis, by the way, we read of how Adam and Eve covered themselves and walked apart from God. This account symbolizes our condition. We all too often try to cover up our imperfections, our sin, while seeking to go it alone. We've done this. We still do it. Yet we were designed for relationship, not isolation. With God and one another. We can't hide from God. And we cannot justify ourselves through self-effort. We need God's love to make us complete. And that love has come to us in Jesus, who covers us by forgiving our sins. He fills the hole in the soul. He completes us while promising to raise us up in glory on the last day. He sends us to love one another in the power of the Spirit. He does this in us through His love. So rather than hiding from God as if we could, we confidently quote the New Testament, walk in love as Christ loved us. We hear that during the offertory sentence many weeks, don't we, before we have a collection. Walk in love as Christ loved us. Adam and Eve hid from God as he was walking in the garden. We walk with the Lord. As he said to Abraham, walk with me and be blameless. Well, we're learning this morning how to do that. Aren't we? That we're made complete in Christ's love. And that's how we're able to walk with God in this life. To know more love. To give more love. To know that put it rather simply, God is love. 
Now you may be thinking to yourself, I don't feel very complete, and I certainly don't feel anything close to being perfect. Well, you're in good company if that's how you interpret this. The concept of completion in the New Testament has two parts, two components, an already and a not yet. And that is so much of how we live our lives as believers. The already and the not yet. What does this mean? When Paul wrote to the Philippians about completion, he said this, God who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. This is the already and the not yet. God, by his unrivaled, infinite power, will one day remedy everything wrong about us. Now, we are counted perfect through faith in Jesus. Then, we will be presented perfect. No sin, no shame, no guilt, no doubt, no fear, nothing broken about us anymore. The already and the not yet. You are perfect with faith in Jesus. You will be presented as perfect. Beyond the flaws of your mortal body now, you will be in glory, in God's love. Believe this. God is completing us by producing in us more and more love. God is sharpening our minds and hearts around what is good through his word. And that love prepares us for him for a perfect, holy God. God makes us ready for that day by teaching us more of his truth and making us more loving toward others. We do this together, not alone. We're designed for a relationship. We're designed to be complete in God and in each other as an extension of that unifying love. So back to the point of this passage, we cannot walk the walk of faith alone in our own strength. We just can't. We need God's love working through us. So there's that puzzle on the glass table, and there's that missing piece in the middle. Doesn't it drive you crazy when you can't find the piece? So let's think about our own lives, where we are right now in our walk with God, and our extension of love with each other. Is there an empty puzzle piece deep within? If so, may Christ complete us as the Holy Spirit pours love into our hearts. Where we miss the mark, which we all do and will, Christ covers us with his redeeming presence through the Holy Spirit. And if there was one verse we should all leave with today, a verse that sums up today's lesson that you will remember, let it be this. Love covers a multitude of sins. That's from the Apostle Peter. <clears throat> Love covers a multitude of sins. Leave here today knowing that you are enveloped and covered in Christ's redeeming love. Through his blood shed on the cross, through his glorious resurrection and ascension, to his coming with the Holy Spirit into your life, into your heart, to invade you with his gentle love, you're covered. Now love. Now take some risks for the kingdom. Be bold. We're covered. Thanks be to God for perfect love. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you to pour your love into our hearts through the Holy Spirit to complete us in Christ. And as we live in an already and not yet reality, help us walk the walk of faith and to make us perfect, that is complete, as you are now and always. In Jesus' name. Amen.